if you're on version 2021 or above, for GTA materials to work. Set to max legacy and restart 3DS max. Create a 100 square meter plane for your grass. Import a GTA PED for scale referencing. Select the Grass Objects Polygon and move down by minus 0.02. Create a path using Freehand Tool, which lets you draw a path while holding down your mouse button. I want my path to go from one side to the other side of the plane, with some turns to add more depth to the mapping. If desired, you can clean up the path a little with help of the normalized spline modifier. Add a sweep modifier and create your section for the path. I would like my path 2.5 meters wide, which is 1.25 meters on both ends of the section. Don't worry about making it too wide, as you are going to be trimming off most of its width later on. Start texturing your models and unwrap their UVs. For perfect tileable path UVs, grab the length of the raw spline and the length of the section which we already know to be 2.5 meters. Insert two edges on the outskirt of your path. And lower the border edges down by minus 0.02 meters. Clone the path and remove all modifiers down to the sweep modifier. Clone the section that you created for the original path and change its length to 3 meters, meaning 1.5 meters on both ends. Plug this into the sweep modifier. Move the path to 0.03 and Z. Add an edge loop down the center of the path and connect two extra edges.
move the center edge loop to 0.005 in Z. The other set of edge loops to 0.01 in Z. And the border edges to minus 0.02. This is to prevent Z fighting between the base and blend layers. Add the same grass material to the blend layer. Add a projection modifier to the grass base layer and choose the grass blend as target. Projecting the texture means your blend layer will blend in perfectly with the base grass layer and have no visible seams. Remove the projection modifier from the base mesh. Set the center edge loop of the blend layer's vertex alpha to black. Copy channel 9 data to vertex alpha channel. Attach the base dirt layer to the base grass layer. Set up your vertex colors for both models. I am just adding gray color of 170 to both. Export both without light flag and with vertex prelights and extra vertex colors. Vertex Alpha cannot render with light flag, which is the setting that adds skylighting and some exposure to models. Export the base terrain collision. With MTA, you can reuse the base terrain collision for the alpha blend as well, but if you are modding single player, you will instead need to create a separate collision for the alpha blend. To do so, import your collision into Steve M's Collision Editor and click Create LOD. Delete the original collision and save as collision. As alpha blend is only an overlay, it won't need its own collisions, but only collision bounding box and sphere. If you're curious how I mapped the nature props, here are some quick steps to do it. Bear in mind that if you're mapping hundreds of objects, you may be running into streaming limits. Scatter the objects using a ray modifier and then apply which will create instances of the arrayed object.
As some of the objects are blocking the path, you can clear them using a cull object. Clone the path and remove all modifiers to get back the raw path. Enable in viewport and choose a suitable radius. Plug that into the culling object property of all array modifiers. Click Invert. Increase the radius if some objects are still blocking the path. Set up a culling box for the outside part of the map. Select the grass border and create shape. Add extrude modifier and make it high enough without any cap options. Add a shell modifier and make it thick enough to cull all unused foliage outside the map. Attach the culling box to the culling cylinder. Set to display as box and object properties. Bake the array modifier into separate instances. Rename the instances to the original object. Offset all foliage by 60 meters in Z to test in-game. As for the grass and blend layers, you can just offset them yourself in Map Editor. Export IPL.